everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a part of my back to school series where I try to provide some tips and advice for all of us teachers who are heading back to school for yet another year in the fall. If this is your first time here, my name is Tressa and I'm a fifth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make lots of teaching and learning videos here on YouTube and I would love to have you consider subscribing and following along. All right, hey guys, what is up? Welcome back. I'm so glad to have you here. I know I have lots of new faces, so if you are new, welcome. If you have been here before, thank you for being here once again. I so appreciate your support. I'm actually so excited for today's video. I have been planning it for some time now. If you caught my last video, it was five things that teachers should do over the summer. If you didn't get to see that one, I will leave it in my description box below. However, one of the things that I did recommend as one of the five things I think teachers should do over the summer is plan their first week of school. Now, I very much believe that that's kind of something major to take on because it's a lot. You're not exactly sure what to take on in the first week because you have a group of kids that you've likely never met before and a lot of unexpected things can happen in that first week. So the way that I like to divide it up is to plan my first day and then plan the rest of the week. And that's kind of my distinction because what I do on the first day is pretty specific versus the rest of the week. So I thought I would make a two part series. Today's video is going to be what I think teachers should do on the first day of school. And my following video will be what I think teachers should do in the first week of school. So I do just wanna say, um, of course, I am a grade five teacher. So I am looking at this from like an upper elementary perspective. So what I say that I'm planning on doing the first day of school may not work for you depending on your grade level. I definitely think most of my goals and ideas are pretty general, but some of them may be more specific for upper elementary. So just keep that in mind as you're watching. All right, you guys, full disclosure, I honestly think that your goal for the first day of school just needs to be making the students feel so welcome, loved, and you want those kids going home saying that their teacher loves them, they are happy with their classmates, they felt safe at school, and that they had so much fun. So I think when you're planning your first day, you have to keep that in mind. You don't need to accomplish a bunch of fancy things. You just want to have some fun and build some relationships with those kids. So with that being said, one of my very first goals, so we're talking like morning of the first day of school is to do my best to greet students by name and this can be challenging if you've never met your students before. I know I'm pretty lucky in that I've taught at the same school for several years now so there are not many surprises in my class. I know the students well enough that for most of them I can greet them by name but either way even if you don't know your kids you're either greeting them by name or trying to learn their name as quickly as possible so that you can address them by their name for the rest of the morning. I try to use their names often throughout the day, especially on that first day, partly for my own like memorization. I find if I use the names over and over again, it comes really naturally. And by day two or like by the afternoon of day one, I have the kids' names down. I'm pretty good with names, I will say that, um, but I think using it does help either way. I also think it makes the student feel like you really know them and that's beneficial as well. So. I have my kids for an hour and a half before their first recess, and I will try to have two or three conversations with each of those students by the time that first recess comes around on the first day of school. I think a lot of kids are shy on the first day and a little bit reserved. So as the teacher, you definitely have to go out of your way to have conversations, but like if I were to give you one piece of advice, it would be to have individual unique conversations with every single one of your students. And I do think it's important that it happens in the morning on the first day. Okay, my second idea and a goal that I have for myself is to have something on my students' desks for them to do as they come in. The first day of school is kind of unique in that students often come in for like an hour long period. It's like they arrive between eight and nine o'clock, which is not the way it is normally, but on the first day of school, you often have 
um, depending on rules, but you often have parents dropping kids off wanting like a picture in front of the school, a picture with the teacher, the parents come in and see the classroom. There's a lot going on compared to your average day. So those students who get there at eight o'clock need something to do. And some of them are just gonna wanna socialize. They're gonna wanna chat with all their friends, see who's in their class, see who where all the desks are. And then you're gonna have kids who want to sit in their space and have something to do. Um, I think that's often the case with new kids. And I think it's often the case with your more shy and reserved kids. When I taught grade one, that was a coloring sheet often. Now that I teach grade five, I usually have like a word search or a back to school crossword on their desk that they can do. Also with that, I think it's important to have the tools they need to complete the task. So if you are leaving a word search, having pencils available for the kids, if you're leaving a coloring sheet, having like a communal bin of pencil crayons, something like that so that they're not digging through their backpacks trying to get their own stuff out, but they can still complete the task that you've left for them. So uh, kind of going on with that, my third goal is to take care of school supplies. Um, it's often hilarious looking at the little tiny kids, like especially your K's and ones coming in on the first day of school with all their school supplies and their backpacks are just like hanging down like by their knees and they've got big totes and they can't even carry all the things that they need. And I just think it's so funny watching them. <laughs> but anyway, I kind of relate this to like, you know, when you show up at someone's house and you take your jacket off and then you cannot find a place to hang your jacket up. Like there's no hook. There's no coat closet. And so then you're just like awkwardly holding your jacket, waiting for somebody to tell you where to put it. I feel like that's what kids are like on the first day of school with their supplies. I find I often get asked like 900 times on the first morning of school, like, Miss like, where do I put this? And where do I put this? And where does this go? And so I have like a firm, <laughs> we are going to take care of school supplies later so please just leave everything at your desk or leave everything in your locker and don't put anything anywhere i'm very strict about how my students organize things so i leave some time for that and i often put that like as one of the first things that we're going to do because again it's that awkward feeling of them having like too much stuff and feeling like disorganized and those, especially those type A students in your class who are gonna want to like organize their desk, have everything where it's supposed to be, it's gonna bother them unless you take care of it. So for me personally, I will have my bins organized where some of the things need to go. I'll have cupboards cleared out where other supplies are going to go. And then I also usually prepare some sort of like visual or graphic often up, like something I can put up on the smart board. Um, in my classroom, my students can put things in their locker, in their desk or in their white bin. So it's kind of like a cubby. Um, so I tell them what can go in their locker, what's gonna go in their desk and what's gonna go in their white bin. And I put that up on the smart board so that I'm not just verbalizing it because I have tried that before, like just calling out, everybody grab your glue sticks. You're gonna put one in your desk and the rest in your white bin. And you've missed like half your class because there's too much going on. So I highly recommend having that visual available as well so that you're orally giving the instruction, but it's also up for those kids who aren't keeping up because it's really hard to get back into routine on the first day of school. Okay, my next goal is always to introduce myself. Again, I do this in the form of a slideshow and it's kind of just a repeat slideshow every year. I change a couple of the things because I change as a person. I might add something or take something away. But my tip with this would be to share a ton of things about yourself. And I'll tell you why I say that. So my goal in introducing myself to the kids is one for them to get to know me, but also for them to connect with me. And so the more that I tell them, the more opportunities I'm giving them for connection. So for example, if I share that my favorite color is teal, let's say I have two people in my class who also love the color teal. I've now connected with two people by just sharing a little fact. I say that my favorite sports are basketball and figure skating. Let's say I connect with four more kids. Okay, now I've hit six kids who feel like they have something in common with me. Next, I share that my favorite food is burritos. I have three kids in my class who like burritos. Okay, now I've connected with nine kids. So you kind of get the point of like where I'm going with it. Um, the more that you can share about yourself, I just feel the more opportunity you're having to personally connect with each of your students. Okay, my next goal is pretty obvious, I would say, but it is to make sure that I take my kids on a school tour. 
Um, I usually don't like super prioritize this because I teach grade five. It'd be different probably if I taught one of the younger grades. It also very much depends on the makeup of your class. So last year I had five students who were new to our school. So I prioritized giving a tour because about a fifth of my class didn't know where things were anyway. Some of those kids do tours like with their parents and the principal or something before school starts. Um, but I just don't want anyone to feel lost or like they don't belong in the school. I want people to be able to like confidently ask to go to the washroom and know where they're going, um, know where the office is, know where some key places like the gym and the library are. And then I would say the other thing is it's important to walk past like their previous year's teacher's classrooms. So um, I always try to walk past the grade four classrooms because it's exciting for them to see their teachers from the year before. Um, I also would say they're excited to see their siblings classrooms. So I usually give a whole school tour and I point out where all the teachers are teaching and we just really take our time. I set the expectations for walking in the hallway at that time as well. And we just take our time. We go slowly, we go quietly. And that way everyone really feels like they kind of know what's going on and they have their bearings in the school. Okay, another one that I would say is pretty obvious, but you need to start talking about expectations on the first day of school. And I would say you don't need to like hammer it down because like I said, I try to focus on fun on the first day of school. I want kids going home happy. So we don't do a lot of work. Um, I don't talk a lot about rules. But throughout that week, I 100% talk a lot about <laughs> rules and expectations. So you want to kind of dabble in it here and there, I would say. Um, I also try to incorporate some like co-constructing of criteria in this. That's like huge in my class. It's something that I do a lot throughout the whole year. And I try to begin it right away on that first day. So something I know I did last year that I really liked was on my two whiteboards. Um, like on one whiteboard, I put my job and on another whiteboard, I put teacher's job and the kids got to come up and kind of do a, like a graffiti wall. So they got to, um, write all over both boards, what they felt like their job in the classroom was and what they felt like my job in the classroom classroom was and then we kind of went over all of their ideas together as a class and that gives me a good idea as their teacher of what they believe the expectations in the classroom should be and if there's any like red flags of something that they completely forgot to talk about then we can bring that up um, later in the week. I also think like I said dabbling in it here and there is important so when you're giving the school tour you're talking about expectations in the hallway before they go out to recess you're talking a little bit about what recess should look like before they eat lunch you might talk about that but it doesn't all need to happen on the first day of school um, but I think it's really important that you don't miss it during that first week of school you want to get your kids on like your side right away and to know what you expect for them to be successful in your classroom. They've likely never been in your class before and so they don't know who you are as a teacher and what you're going to expect from them. So I wouldn't say like forego rules and expectations in the first week. I would say take on like a couple every single day and make sure that you are nailing those down. So by the end of the first week, a lot of those main expectations and rules have been talked about, have been discussed and are set in the student's mind. All right, this one is on every single one of my lists, I'm pretty sure, but it is to make sure you read to the kids. So make sure you have, or at least in my case, I always have a giant pile of suitable back to school books set up and ready to read to my kids. This is something that I often do like activities with throughout the day. So one of the ones that I read last year that I loved, for example, was called School's First Day of School. So we read that one and then they got to write their own story about what our school would have felt like with all the students arriving on the first day of school. I know the book, I believe it's called The Most Important Thing. You could read that to them and then have them write their own version of that from like their perspective. Um, I also love to read Chrysanthemum and talk about names. Like I could go on forever. There are so many examples, but I also think that having books that you don't necessarily need to do an activity with as like time fillers or, you know, it's hard to get back to school. So there's going to be times when the kids are kind of running out of steam, running out of energy, and you need something to do. So having a book that you can kind of chill out for a second, read to them, and then kind of get everyone back together for a fun activity would be good as well. So I recommend having both time fillers and kind of purposeful books that you want to read and do a corresponding activity. All right, my very last goal for that first day of school is to incorporate some icebreakers. 
Um, like I said, you likely have new kids in your class, new kids to your school. You might have some who transferred from another school in the community or another district, another province, whatever. You're probably going to have some new kids in your class. And then also, I know at my school, we have more than one class in every grade and then they get mixed together and you know they have new classmates. And so <laughs> it's good to make sure the kids have the opportunity to get to know each other. So in my first school, I talked about how I like to address my kids by name. I also want them to be able to address each other by name. And this partly comes naturally by me saying the kids' names so often, but I also want them to do the same. So a lot of my icebreakers have to do with names and characteristics so that they are, again, building those connections with each other. So it's not just important for me to connect with them, it's important for them to connect with each other as well. So I thought I'd share just a couple of my favorite icebreakers for those first couple days of school. Um, one that I do love and I often use is when, I don't know what it's called, so I'm just gonna describe it. Um, the whole class stands in a circle and the kids have to come up with like their name and then you get to pick what else. So they could do their name in a sound, they could do their name in an action, they could do their name and an animal that starts with the same first letter as their name or a food that starts with the same first letter. Be careful with those. I had three Z's in my class last year, so we had to Google some stuff. But anyway, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but pick one and you choose a student to start with. They say their name and they do their little action and then it goes to the next person. The next person has to do their own name, their own action, and then also say the name and the action action of the person in front of them. So then the third person does their own name, their own action, and the two previous ones. And so it actually gets harder as you progress around the circle, but it's a really, really good attentive listening game because if kids aren't paying attention to their classmates, then they're kind of going to get stuck when it gets to be their turn. I'm not super strict with it on the first day of school. Like I definitely will help out if somebody's forgetting something. You never want to like shame or embarrass a kid. So after Absolutely be careful with that but you're there helping and the whole class can kind of pitch in and help each other until you've completed the whole circle and you know everyone's names and everyone's action or fact or whatever you decided to do to incorporate into that game okay another one of my favorite icebreakers is making an index card tower so you have kids pair up I personally wouldn't let kids choose their own partners during those first couple days of school. I would do it and I would probably also use that as a little bit of an icebreaker in some way for them to be able to find a partner. So whether they line up in birth order without talking or tallest to shortest without talking or if you pass out cards and they have to find their partner with the same card but make it like some sort of fun activity versus being like go find a partner because then you're for sure going to leave those shy reserved or new kids out and kind of not make them feel welcome. Assign every student a partner and then with their partner they get an amount of index cards and you can choose the amount. I think I usually do like about 20. So um, with their partner, they have to have a discussion and they have to come up with commonalities or similarities between them and their partner. So they'll likely start pretty basic, like, oh, we're both 10 years old. We're both boys. We both like pizza. And then it's going to get kind of deeper into actual personal facts. So we both have an older sister. We both have a golden retriever. We both went to Florida. And they're going to really get to know each other. Anyway, as they're having this conversation, when they find something that they have in common, they write it on index card and as they pile up their index cards they're trying to make a tower and I tell my kids that they can cut or fold the tower in any way that they want the only thing they can't do is like tape it or glue it or staple it together so they need to build a tower they can kind of manipulate the cards however they would like they just can't attach them using any sort of like substance so in the end of the time or the end of the activity, whenever you decide it's over, whichever group has the highest tower is your winning pair. And obviously the real winning aspect is that your kids have gotten to know each other a lot better and perhaps even made a friendship along the way. All right, you guys, those are all of my things that I think teachers should be doing on the first day of school. Obviously, they're all based off of goals that I have of things I want to accomplish as a teacher on the first day of school. But I do hope I either gave you a new idea or helped you figure something out, especially if you are a new teacher or you need a little refresher to help you to prepare because I know there is a lot of pressure and we get those butterflies and that nervous energy and it's so nice to be able to have some help to get us through 
through that first day. I can think back to what my very first day as a teacher and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I remember the night before sitting at my kitchen table like what the heck have I gotten myself into? I have no idea what I'm going to do with 23 kids tomorrow. Like, what the heck? The only thing I can say is that it ends up being okay. I'm pretty sure people kind of forget the first day of school because everyone's nervous and anxious and excited. So not a lot of pressure, but I do hope that you are able to take something from this video. I would also love to hear from you. So if there's something that you truly believe you need to do on the first day of school that other teachers should know about, please leave a comment below because I would love some ideas Ideas. I'm always up for incorporating some new things into my routines and my back to school processes. So absolutely leave a comment below. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up because it truly supports my channel. If you are new, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and follow along. I post new videos every single week and I will see you in my next one.